special segment of the Z Live today from the Franklin Wilson RBC Graduate Center here at the University of the Bahamas as we host a business roundtable discussion. It'll be it's the first in a series of such discussions. The Government and Public Policy Institute at the university is going to be hosting. We have as our special guest business uh, persons today, uh, Mr. Warren uh, Bacardi of Bristol Sellers. We have Mrs. Uh, Danielle Osborne of Dairy Queen and Mr. John Wilson, who is a senior partner at McKinney Bancroft and Hughes and the proprietor of uh, Papa John's, Menchie's, and the BAF Financial. We are so happy to have them here with us today. We, we, in the course of our discussions very early, it became clear that you all have some concerns about uh, the ability of your of companies and businesses in the country to deliver that higher level of service because the employees that they have are coming maybe with not altogether the right set of uh, skills or the skills at the level that you require. Let's first of all talk about what are the kinds of skills a business needs to have the kind of employee that delivers optimally for that business. Well, first of all, in, in any business, you need to know how to count. Uh, you yeah, need yeah. Math so you need basic. good math, mathematical <laughs> numeracy skills. Yeah, so you don't give away my money. <laughs> um, you okay. need to, to know. So, so, those so math things, skills are important. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, I, I have been places where I see people struggling to know how much change to give. Okay. And so um, you also need a bit of basic understanding of a cash register or, or something. And most everybody's dealing with cash registers. Um, you also need basic English skills, okay. and, and I think most of the challenges are in communication. I think um, now, now, are we talking about this uh, that skill that says I know how to make my subject and verbs agree, or are we talking about communication that says I know how to express myself in a way that I understood, I can be understood. And I can listen in a way that yes. I can understand. Second, I mean the second. I, so you I, communication. Ideally, I, yeah, ideally we would love to have everyone matching the words, and, and but that's not going to happen in Bahamas right now. But we would like to have people who are able to express themselves, so the customer can understand. Also, so the, their employer can understand their issues, okay. and and who are able to listen and understand the okay. the customer. So we've got math skills or numeracy skills, and then we've got English or liter uh, literacy and communication skills. Okay, anything else? We operational skills, I think, is important. Oh, um, by, and by operational uh, skills, you mean what? Not, not everybody um, knows how to drive a forklift, drive a truck, on those that can uh, stock products, how to put things in certain places, warehouse, how to turn over inventory. So there's a lot of operational work that's needed as well, and I think that also um, uh, moves towards vocational. So yes, more technical, practical, vocational. One time ago, they used to do these city and guilds, used to have these pitmans, and they would do very practical training that people could use right away when they came out of school. Well, I think the national training, the government has moved with the national training. Um, yeah, the national, that, yeah, national they training. Do more soft skills or something, or they do more like with the city and guilds. Right, right. Yeah. But, but absolutely, I mean, the follow up on from about you know the more, more vocational type of education and it does not necessarily have to be academic in every sense mm -hmm. right but ultimately it still has to be education mm -hmm. and in order to have education there is a there is a basic level of understanding of reading right a basic level of understanding of English a basic level of understanding of mathematics a basic, a basic level of understanding of disability and how to get along with people and how to interact with people um, and, and you also need a sense of ownership, right? And what I find that is sometimes lacking is a, a sense of ownership, a sense of pride in what you do, right? So that you own everything that you do. Okay, now this, this is uh, one of those uh, 
soft skills, a little tricky area that you wonder where you're going to get that in the house or in the home or you're going to get this in the school because it's true. Many of people uh, show up to work and they show up late. They show up to work late. Uh, they don't show up, show up at all, but when they show up, they show up and basically I'm just going to do enough to get by so they don't fire me, but uh, but but uh, I'm not going to do anything extra because that, so that pride that you're talking about, the sense of excellence, okay, now, so where's that going to come from? But, I mean, I keep harping on this, right? To me, it comes back to education. It all comes back to education. What, wherever you go, I mean, unless you fix the educational system in our country, we will forever be swimming up tide. We will forever, forever be facing headwinds in trying to get the Bahamas as a country, get our people where we need them to be. So from primary school through to high school, through to college, through to university, um, much, from your point of view, much of where we can go depends on what we are doing in those areas. Yes, absolutely. Yes, in, the context of, um, in the context of any country or any company, your greatest resource is people. You can have great ideas. Uh, you can have sand, sea, and sun. You can have a beautiful product. But if you don't have a greatest resource in education, in investing back into our human resources, it's very difficult to solve any country or any company. But now, you know, I, 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 and I, I'm, it's strange to me because you have students who come out of our system, let's take the public education system for the most part, and I, I have never been to private school in my life. No, I Right? Exactly. So any number of us have passed through these public systems, and this level of responsibility, need to push, be motivated, uh, we have. But are you suggesting that broadly the, the, the system is not churning, or we got like, Maybe uh, of these 50 students in here is not churning out a majority, uh, maybe my count is bad, a majority of them, uh, the system isn't pushing out a majority of them that reflects that, that level of go get it done, and if I'm gonna put my hands to it, even if these, this isn't the thing I want to do, I'm gonna do it to the best of my ability, and, and while I'm here, I'm gonna innovate it and do whatever I can, that we're not put, pushing out those kinds of students. Not enough. Not enough. And the thing is, how many years ago were you in school? Were you and John? About what? 30 years ago? Don't age, don't age. It was a long while. It's a long, long while. It's a long, long while. It's a long, 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 long while. Yeah. Different years. Yeah, the different era. And also, bear in mind, the family structures have changed. Mm. And the social uh, uh, issues social right, have social changed. And, and so you all, these, the sense of responsibility, civility, a lot of that has changed. When, when in our era, when did you see girls fighting on the street in their uniforms? I mean, that was was not heard of. But now you see that, and these are the students there that we have to employ. So how do we get? It has to be on all levels, from the school to the families. But you know, if the families fail, then somewhere along the way. Society has to fill in the gap in order to, to, to have a better society. So we, we have the uh, chairman of the uh, Bahamas Chamber of Commerce here, uh, Chamber of Commerce and Confederate, the Employees Confederation. Uh, so if, if they were getting what they wanted out of the public education, well, they would, the business community would be saying that we have got to move our public education forward in ways to produce both these technical, soft, and I would dare say leadership skills that will make us a more productive uh, business community. Is that fair? Yeah, but they, but, but they have. I mean, the business community has been saying for years. And that, that's why the government and public policy, we won't put it on the record today, because right. <laughs> we're going to try and transcribe this stuff, <laughs> and we're going to produce it for our, for our journal. And uh, so maybe somewhere it'll be heard a little more. Mind you, I, I have to say that even the, here at the university, there has been meetings held with education toward whether we are producing through our teachers the kinds of teachers that can deliver 
those kinds of skills and whether the schools are producing for us the kinds of candidates for teachers who can deliver those kinds of skills. And so there is that ongoing discussion. Yeah, I, I mean, absolutely. And, and you know, drastic steps need to be taken, right? I, I mean, I'm all on the front line. I don't um, kind of interview candidates or interact with And I, and, and I hear stories every night you know, about the, the quality of persons who, who come through the door, right? Now you try to weed out the very best that you can, okay? But what the Bahamas has to realize is that globalization through the WTO and these other multinational agencies is being imposed upon us, right? Globalization is being imposed upon us and we are not ready for globalization. Right? Because That's a whole lot of discussion. Because, <laughs> because now we have to compete. Right. Okay, but 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 let's. We the public education has to system has to be pushed, reformed to deliver that. But you know, having been in government myself, understanding the constraint of a system that has huge inertia, that is not easily turned. I can tell you, for any number of reasons. So well, what you're saying so, is a politician cannot fix that. Well, I'm saying I'm saying they can help, but I'm asking you: is maybe is there something the business community can do to help move the process along? I think to your point, Shabazzo, it has to come within yourself as well. Mm. And we have, you know, what I've noticed is we have a very talented, inane community here that come out with the basics out of out of, out of school, and we bring them into the company. It's it's a very talented. inventory or to do certain functions within our operations or in our sales of our, of our company. If you just give a little bit of education, which we have to do our job as well as, as business leaders, you know, to educate. So you can give me the basics, but if that individual has it within them to be able to survive and say, listen, you know, Bristol may not be for me. It may be for me for two or three years. Well, let me get you at least two or three years, give you some experience, and then help you get to where you really want to go. But the only thing I ask for is put whatever you can. Put your personal pride into whatever you're doing. And then from there, we'll help you get to wherever you really want I, to go. I, if you just take them from that point, yes. you know, just the basic knowledge, but you have that individual who's willing and able, you, you can, you can, you can it. requires mentoring. The business, the, the, there needs to be more mentoring um, of, of younger employees. If, if I could, if I could find a means to get this information, I'd love to have it today. I'd love to have what the total expenditure of the business community in the Bahamas is and what percentage of that is training. I'd love to see it, to get a sense of, you know, uh, really what we are doing. So, for instance, you can look at the government's budget and you can see that its expenditure on education might be 68%, 70%, it depends on who you talk to some days. But what is that percentage that private expenditure reflects in terms of training for its employees? We have a question from Claudius, uh, speaker, please. Uh, this is primarily a comment. A comment, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm retired now, but I worked previously for a large government corporation. And one of the main concerns was that, that corporation spent a lot of money training engineers and business persons. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Um, I, I worked previously for a, a, a large government corporation that spent lots of money on training, overseas training. Um, and those students, those engineers, um, business persons would come back and they fit into the environment that exists. And that environment was not one that encouraged them to employ these new skills that they mm -hmm. went off and learned. And so my, my basic point is that, yes, there are concerns with um, the numeracy uh, and literacy of uh, new students coming into um, the business environment, but they all conform to the environment that with, within which um, they find themselves. So it's on both sides. They have to come into an environment where they feel comfortable to go out on a limb, where they know that um, management within that business is going to give them credit when they do something good. And if an honest mistake is made, 
then that business will either provide the education or the tools or whatever the processes are um, that will assist them in taking ownership. Because I think no one's going to take ownership if the environment is not one that tangibly encourages that sticking your neck out there. It's, he is pointing to something that all of you as business people, I believe, know. A culture matters. The business culture matters. What people go into and see as a norm, written or unwritten rules of how you do the game. You know, so if, if lateness is a culture, then even the best employees eventually may end up conforming to that culture. But, but that then leads us to what do you do to develop culture that inspires the kinds of behavior that he's talking about in a business? Leadership. Yeah. Yeah, lead yes, yes, sir. Leadership, and also, you're correct. I mean, I guess we have it a bit easier as an international franchise because the culture is, is passed down from the international body. And I must say, Dairy Queen is a very good um, company to be employed with and to own as a franchise. They uh, spend a lot of money in, 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 in training and, and all these things. So it, it's easier for us. Now, I know it must be more difficult for those who are operating businesses that don't have a, a, an international partnership or, or standard. And then it, it requires a little bit more work in terms of um, seeking out. There are many trainers there and, and uh, coaches, coaches and that sort of thing. But the international businesses would have uh, would be driven from abroad, and um, and and you should always seek to have your staff participate in these things. But might not the might not the franchise point the way to fixing some of the issues? Because the truth yeah. is, in a franchise, you don't have the luxury of being indisciplined about what product is offered, right. how you offer the product, what the product looks like, and so forth. And so there are standards that have to be applied. But you, if you're not in a franchise environment, you're just starting out as a company, maybe you think, you know, do it as you go along and so forth, where maybe having a some system to discipline. cause you to comply. For instance, there might be a group of distinguished businessmen or women who you could bring and say, listen, hold me to account. Hold me, where are your financials? Mm -hmm. You know, where your, 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 where's your employee manual? Mm -hmm. And so forth, and that, that, that doing that might help. I, I mean, it, it most certainly would. Um, and there's no question that having the infrastructure that Daniel speaks about in, in franchise groups like um, they, they, Dairy Queen and Papa John's and Menchie's and the like, right? It, it, it's necessary for that infrastructure to to assist, you know, in leading that business, right? But then ultimately, you know, I mean, like I think you pointed out leadership, right? Leadership is important in specific companies, right? And you will always have the exceptions. You will always have companies that excel, companies like Bristol Sellers, Dairy Queen, and the others, Papa John's, Menchie's. They will always excel, right? They will excel because they are primarily exceptions to the rule in the sense that if you're talking about what you need in the Bahamas in order to build a successful, a successful company, you need to have a good pool of workers to choose from. Not only for these individual companies, but for everyone. You need to have a good pool of workers to choose from. Yeah, okay. I think also we should, if we would want to move away from the, the employees' focus, because you know, we don't want to beat up on all, you know, on, on the on the employees, because we, we need those employees, and it's our responsibility to really try and train them. But would these international companies, while they bring the discipline, what they cannot correct is things like cost of energy, um, you know, cost of operating businesses here in the Bahamas, labor cost, labor co you know, all these things, um, cultural, like while we have high labor costs um, in terms of minimum wage and whatnot, we also have um, a sense of entitlement. I mean, while you, you find that businesses like ours, the retail businesses, we, uh, while we have to choose from the pool, we, the, the, I guess the exception to the rule out of the, the, the public system and those who really um, are very academic or whatever, they seek to, 
to find jobs and and cold soup, like you know, the law firms, accounting, whatever. They're not looking to come to work to Dairy Queen or Manchester. They're coming to work to job for John's law firm or whatever. So um, we we still have some issues locally, not not just the um, the employees, but also the cost of doing business in the Bahamas. And, and that's not something that could be corrected by the international franchise, you know, because it, it, we just have to look at ways in which we can, can make it easier and, and less costly to operate. Right, and, 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 and that's another issue, but, but don't get me wrong, as Juan pointed out, right? I mean, there are very good employees, you know, working throughout the, 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 the breadth of the Bahamas. I mean, the breadth of the Bahamas, right? Those good employees are good employees because they're held to account by their um, business bosses. The leadership. The leadership, mm -hmm. right? They're held to account. Mm -hmm. And when they're held to account, there is no question that, you know, you will have good employees. You know, but a lot of times you're going to have to go through a number of employees to get there. So we, we, we have to take a break uh, for news, uh, but when we come back, we are going to move away from the employees because we're going to talk about the business opportunities that these uh, young people and others can find in the Bahamas that you think exist out there. And so, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Z Live. I'm Shivago Lang, your host. We're so glad you could join us here today as we conduct this business roundtable discussion uh, here at the University of the Bahamas, the Franklin Bilson RBC Graduate Center. We'll be back after this news break. <laughs> 